learning how to appreciate cuisine and new foods, or if they're just taking the pizzas out. I think it's both. I think it's both, and I can speak for myself because I see that my children, and as they grow up, always I had the question, oh, do your children eat um, extravagant food? And I tell you, both daughters are different when they grow up. And as they grow older, they try more things, but when they were younger, I have to make soups all the time. And uh, that's how I got vegetables in my little one, because for some reason she created a saying, I'm allergic to broccoli, and she's not, she just didn't like it. So, but being on the ship now, they're eating from the adult menu, they're picking the choices, they're trying new things, they have tried the escargots, and which is nice, you know, which makes me feel happy, not only because I'm a chef, but because we also have the European background. We grew up with that, uh, and I enjoy that. And of course, the deck is up there, and the French fries are there, they're going to eat that as well, as long as they pace themselves. Yeah. Say your last name. Uh, Weissman. W-E-I-S-S-M-A-N. Christine. Nice to meet you. It's a round table. Do yeah. you want a second to have a... Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm going to record in you. Yeah. Um, and my name is uh, John Frost. I'm with the DisneyBlog.com. Very I'm nice to, to meet you. I'm Judy Antos. I have my tea. Thank you very much. Good morning, Chef. I'm Adrian. Nice to meet you again. So, can, when did the planning for the Disney Fantasy begin? Oh, this is a Disney dream. I mean, <laughs> With the Disney dream, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think a lot of things we did together, knowing um, that we had the two ships coming back to back. And um, we did a lot of concept work together already because you're sitting on the drawing board. It's a team effort with all their hotel operations, our food and beverage department, and of course our design group, WDI. So this comes first, the design, and then we sit on the drawing board and say, what's okay, roll court concept, what's cuisine style, what we want to do. Do. But it's not only that, then it's the china, it's the decor, it's a, if you go into Royal Court, the bread basket, it's a little um, carriage, if you have seen it yet. In Animator's Palette, we have the little butter knife. And our plates are really only designed for us, which took us a while. We went back and forth, and where do we want to go? And then once you have all this, you design the food, once I know the cooking, the cooking style, um, and then you don't want to be redundant. So you have a whole grid, and you say, okay, appetizers, fish, this, and you go like this, and then you just put it in like that, and then later on you become the cooking techniques, the ingredients with it. And But you want to give choices to the guests. Can you ex ex explain how you... Uh do choices for like um, healthy eating, vegetarian, yeah. or different allergies? It's like my, my favorite part actually, because you can be creative even though not the majority. So, but I think looking at it, it was very important to utilize grains, to utilize proteins, to utilize lentils. We have the barley cakes on in the course, we have the um, portobello mushrooms on the lentil, uh, ragu with some uh, parsley sauce. Um, the faro is new. I just came up with it. Yeah. So, but then as we have to go in the kitchen and under makes that is not day-to-day -day stuff the chefs are cooking. With. It's really unique, so you have to teach them and to. So, Lindsay, I like that. I don't want to use. You can't always use it. So you have to substitute with some other proteins. And um, I enjoy. I enjoy that though. Do you um, do you find that um, more and more people are coming on? You know. Asking for the lighter foods and the vegetarian and the gluten free. I think with us being offering it, it's definitely for us, it's good, it's there. So then you as a guest can make the choice. I would still say guests are on vacation and they would like, they're looking for the lobster, they're looking for the beef tenderloin, they're looking for the protein from the vegetables, which is there. But also, we have created our menus now so diverse that the vegetarian offerings are there, the, um, the lighter note offerings is right there. So, especially in the beginning, you might want to do traditional items, but I think as you on longer cruises, you see the lighter note offerings, the entree salad, 
is going on uh, our tour. But you, as a guest, can make that choice, which is, I think, we're doing a great job with offering the diverse uh, offerings with that. Unique items like the tenderloin in um, Royal Court, but also a boar, a, a tenderloin of boar with a potato pancake. So. I dined at Palo last night and had the yeah. uh, the Osabuco, which the was a mickey. Uh, nice. And then, we and, the but the dessert, the souffle, yeah. was, I mean, I'm going to remember that for a long time. What's your favorite dessert here on the I fantasy? said it earlier, it's a, the chocolate souffle, but I never can stop this dessert because I have to eat something savory afterwards, which then could be cheese at the end or just a uh, savory item. Mm -hmm. But our desserts are very creative. We also have a gourmet souffle in the uh, oil corn as well. What do you want the guests to take away at the end of their seven-day cruise on, on the fantasy? What do you want them to bring home with them? Yeah, I think that they are, um, that it was a great, the best food ever in the cruise line industry, and I think that's what we have, and um, that we are very diverse. And we cater to every palate. Well, thank you very much. It was very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I have a couple more questions.